Book review, right. Anyone who's been a fan of me for any length of time probably knows that my favorite book of all time is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I've done two reviews on that book. One of them was on this channel two years ago, and one of them was on my other channel, Bangkeek 8408, last year. Last year's is better. Please watch that one, not the one on Vlogdriver. I'm not going to be reviewing that book today, however, because, well, that would be silly. I am, however, going to review Audrey Niffenegger's newest book, Her Fearful Symmetry. In this book, Her Fearful Symmetry, Niffenegger chose to try to tell a ghost story. At the beginning of the book, the character of Elspeth Noblin, or Noblin, I don't know, dies after a long battle with cancer. In her will, in a somewhat surprising move, Elspeth Noblin left her flat and almost everything in it to her two twin nieces who she had never met. Julia and Valentina are 20 years old at the time of her death. They're 21 when they move into the flat, and they're still kind of trying to find themselves. Oh, and by the way, Julia and Valentina live in Chicago, and Elspeth lived in England. The arrangement is that Julia and Valentina have to move into the flat when they're 21 years old. They can't sell it for a whole year. They have to live there for a full year, and their parents are not allowed in the flat. Elspeth has had some sort of estrangement with her sister in the past. So upon turning 21, the two twins fly over to London and move into the flat. And at this point, this might be sounding like your typical young adult novel storyline, but um, there's a little bit more to it than that because Elspeth isn't quite as dead as everyone seems to think that she is. Whoa, what happened to the lights? This is a very interesting story. Like I said, it is for all intents and purposes a ghost story. Imagine taking a campfire story and making it into a full novel. That's what you've got with her fearful symmetry. And not to not campfire stories, because there are some good ones out there. But I didn't like this story quite as much as I liked The Time Traveler's Wife. Part of that's because it's The Time Traveler's Wife. It was brilliantly conceived just by its very nature, and this one is not quite as brilliantly conceived by its very nature. Which is not so much a fault in the book itself, just a reason why I didn't like it as much. And ironically enough, my favorite subplot of the whole story is a subplot that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the rest of the story. There's this character named Martin, and his wife wife, Marika, I think is how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. Martin is severely OCD, but his wife has learned to live with him, but she finally just gets fed up of having to live with his obsessive tendencies and she moves out. And so we kind of hear their, their reconciliation and their love story and all that sort of thing. And it's really a very touching part of the story, but the only real connection that it has with Elspeth's story, the ghost story, is the fact that they all live in the same building. And that subplot was probably added just for the sake of filling out, fleshing out the ghost story a little bit. I do like ghost stories, I like campfire stories, but I feel like they work better as short stories and not as novels, so that's kind of my impression of her fearful symmetry. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't read it. If you're a fan of Audrey Niffenegger, it's the same type of writing style and, and that sort of thing, and it's, it's still a pretty good story. And that's it for me. Hope the lights come back on soon. See you next time.